Hello and welcome to the Industry Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Tom Asenzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Welcome to our nightmare for the last time. Yay. Also joining us today is Totera. I feel like I've been in a nightmare my whole life. Yeah, that's called adolescence. <laughs> um, I thought that's called puberty. Yeah, that coincides. Uh, true, true, true. Hey, have you guys ever had that nightmare where you go up to public speaking and you're kind of naked? Well, ask yourself. You never asked if I'm wearing clothes right now. Oh my. Uh, mm, good, good answer. Good, good answer. You know what, folks? For the longest time we've been doing this, we never did a video call. We should try that one day. What? What are you wearing? <laughs> No, no, in general, in general, because we, we never did video calls when we do this. So it's kind of implied that we're well-dressed and whatnot, but no, no, now that you ring it up, Silver, are you wearing anything? Ooh, I, who really wants to know? <laughs> the audience at home. <laughs> I am wearing loafers and pants oh, okay. well, I th- and I a sweatshirt. Like, I thought ponies and other creatures don't normally wear clothes. I ain't a pony. Besides, you can't you can't look <laughs> relaxed and poised without like a smoking jacket. <laughs> okay, next time I should bring a tumbler of brandy. <laughs> a tumbler of brandy. Oh, why not just bring the whole bottle out? <laughs> Give it time. We're building. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, I'm just wearing your shirt, Silva. Just my shirt. Well, now there. That's all manner of shipping. Mm. <laughs> no, the one that you gave, the continuity one. It's very yeah. comfortable, by the way, and it's available at <laughs> Where Silver can they buy the shirt? <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> We're... A convention near you where Silver Quill's there. A convention once everyone stops freaking out about the coronavirus. Oh, true. Yes. That. <laughs> and also, you also joining us today is Totera. Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review. Nightmare Nights issue 5, the final issue. So, in this issue, Princess Luna and her team of former villains have their final confrontation with Princess Eris. Oh my goodness, that sounds so epic. <laughs> uh, that sounds so epic. Anyway, Silver, what do you have to say? First impressions and all. Well, this was a very satisfying, if slightly dark, conclusion to the Nightmare Night story. I won't say everyone got a chance to shine. Some have some had peaked earlier on in the series. Others were just getting going. Really, uh, I think Capper l- steals the show. But it's funny. Last episode, we talked about uh, Daring Doubt and the talk of, oh, it's subverting our expectations. Well, that doesn't always mean it's good. Sometimes you subvert an expectation and it's just underwhelming, unsatisfying, all manner of uns. Not so here. This one... Just when you think everything is going to be settled proper, nope, it throws a really big curveball at you, and I'll enjoy talking about that later on. Anyway, Tara, what about you? I really enjoyed this comic. I like uh, comics and episodes where they surprise me, where it's like I have them thinking, okay, he's probably going to do this or something like that, but then all of a sudden, (coughs) bam, they do this kind of twist. It's like, oh, okay, I did not see that coming. Mm, All right, so... It's kind of a surprise for you then. Yes, and they've done it multiple times in this comic. Ah, that's good, that's good. And as for me, this comic was a lot of fun. Like, the whole process of reading through this was a lot of fun. I I highly enjoy Kepper here. Kepper, like Silver said, he stole the show or stole the issue, whatever it is. Like, he is best boy. But anywho, I'm gonna stop here. And, well, if you have not read this comic yet, well, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. Hope you enjoy the issue. It's kind of a blast. <laughs> Get it? Blast? <laughs> whoever, whoever read the comic understands that. <laughs> but, anywho. Uh, well, let's start off the adventure with our villains. Haha. Uh, they're just sitting around monologuing and stuff. And... They're just comparing notes because uh, Kepler here says that he's been living in hardship 
uh, living under the iron rule of the Storm King and stuff. And so has uh, Ares with the Pony of Shadows and whatnot. So they bond with that knowledge that they have something in common. And while the whole time, Kepper is just doing magical coin tricks. And Ares is really impressed. Like, how do you do that? I want to know. And Kepper says it's a secret and whatnot. But anywho, let's be prepared for Daybreaker to come in and bring along our, what you call this, prisoners. Yes. And talking about prisoners, we continue on to that one panel where Daybreaker, uh, Fizzle Pop, and Trixie are just standing there, acting so cool. So they talk about restoring Daybreaker's memory and stuff. And Daybreaker just asks Luna, do you know a pony by Nightmare Moon? And uh, Luna just says, oh yeah, you, you mean this? And asks the gen to perform an illusionary spell on her where she is the uh, Nightmare Moon. So they bonded for a bit and stuff. And they figure out a plan. Or in this situation here, Daybreaker just says, okay, now you're here, get out, go be free. But Luna just says, no, we can't because uh, there's something I need to get back. And I'm going to pause here. Silver, what do you think? What I find hilarious is that Capra is basically telling her what he's going to do. He's basically announcing, I'm keeping my cards close to my chest, and when there's an opportunity, I will strike. <laughs> and lo and behold, we actually see him strike. And so... Eris, when she's so enchanted by that coin trick, she's much less aware and probably less clever than she thinks. And that's a sign of why her downfall is approaching. She's so easily distracted and can't e isn't aware enough uh, not that you could say to her, I'm going to betray you and here's how, and she won't pick up on it. And I guess it's kind of funny because she's been in control so much this, uh, this comic series that, it seems kind of fitting, though. Victory has defeated you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Tara, what do you think? Uh, I, I kind of agree with Silver, what he said. Although, the whole Eris kind of being, you know, not easily noticing. It kind of reminds me of Scar from The Lion King. Like, he wanted to be king so badly, and he comes up with, like, this clever plan to kill Mufasa and... Uh, well, well, he thought he killed Simba, and then once he gets what he wants, it's like, yeah, I, I got nothing to worry about. Just like how Eris, she's like, yeah, I got nothing to worry about. I got all this power, this and that. I could just easily do whatever I want. And yeah, overconfidence is always the downfall of the protagonist or antagonist. There's always been that. And Your overconfidence is your weakness. Your faith in your friends is yours. <laughs> ah, I'm going to be in a disappointing sequel. And I'll cap oh, off an even more disappointing trilogy. <laughs> Silver, did you read the tweet? I've read many tweets, but which tweet? Did you know that uh, Emperor Palpatine in the whatever it is, is a clone? Okay, let's let's file that under no duh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he flat out says, I'm in a clone body. Uh, really? I don't remember that. Oh, man, that... I mean, that's, that's the whole premise of this. Let's say, Norman, if you're trying to blow my mind, that wasn't even a firecracker. It wasn't. It wasn't even a firecracker done. It, it was a tweet. It was a tweet that was done officially. And then Bilbo Baggins, like what? Frodo Baggins just says, like, how should, how could we know? You never told us. I'm almost tempted to go back and hibernate from what a non-shock that was. <laughs> Uh, where was we again? Terra, did you share your opinion already or not? Yes, I, yes, I did. I'll try to change the subject, though. <laughs> I'll change the subject again. Yeah. Anywho. Uh, uh, as we carry on, uh, Ares is looking through her magic mirror, trying to see where is Daybreaker so she can get herself ready. And it seems that, yes, Daybreaker is moving along well with the prisoners. Uh, while she waits, she asks Capper to perform another trick. And yes, 
uh, Kepler here is trying to do some card tricks, but Ares is not having any of it because she owns a casino and card tricks are boring to her. And with that, Kepler says, oh, um, coin, you like the coin tricks, right? So, uh, look, I, I do coin tricks. Flip. It overshoots his head and he kind of stumbles and oh no, he fall on the throne uh, knocking over the staff. Oh no. Ares is really angry at him and says that you better not break the staff or whatever it is. And Kepler just apologizes for knocking it over and gives the staff back to Ares just to have a note for people uh the globe on the staff is yellow in color hmm that's very interesting because previously it's an artist error nothing more uh, yeah 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 we'll, we'll go with that it's an artist error yeah <laughs> had a brick kill mess up on this one really bad hmm oh yeah definitely yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anywho as Ares is checking out the staff uh daybreaker comes in with the prisoners and in this here right now, uh, Ares is monologuing, doing the whole um, villain speech kind of deal. And Tempest here just says, get on with it. And yes, get on with it. Get on with it. <laughs> and yes, she asks Daybreaker to bless them to smithereens. And Daybreaker says, no. And I'm going to pause here because as... After this, we're just going to wrap it up. So, Tara, what do you think? Well, I do like how... Again, this this also, this also again re reminds me of the whole Lion King thing where Ares is like, do this, and then Capri tries to do something. He's like, no, not that. Anything but that. It's like, hey, this kind of reminds me of the Lion King, where Zazu sings, it's a small world after all. <laughs> oh, wow. That's all. <laughs> Uh, it's, just, it's just like this. I do like the comment. I'm not saying I hate it, but it just gives me. Once I see something like this, it reminds me of Lion King, <laughs> which hey. I do like. Not the classic one, not the new one. Not the classic one? No, I said I like the classic one, not uh, the new one. All right. Yes, which does not feature any clones. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Some, something that Norman tried to blow your mind with. Oh, God dang it. Whatever. <laughs> Is that all? Yeah, that's all. <laughs> all right, then. So, what about you? Well, yeah, I mean. I, I love it when villains are so self-aware. It's like, oh, you had me monologuing. <laughs> <laughs> Although Tempest, Tempest's short attention span or, or impatience has been the group's undermining since pretty much they walked into this casino. Oh, uh, true that. So she really needs to, like, let them get a false sense of security. It'll, it'll work out for you in the long run. The more you keep them talking, the better it is for you. <laughs> true, true. So I'm guessing that's about it. Well, that's about it. We're about to we're about to get to the big reveal. Yeah, but I just have to point it out. Like that that, that artist era from Hedo, like that is just un un unforgivable. Unforgivable. Anywho. Mm hmm Carrying on. So Daybreaker just says no. And Eris says, Oh, that's a bad that's a bad answer, Sunshine. I'm gonna use this device and shock you and yep she pressed the button and nothing happens she presses it again and nothing happens and daybreaker just walks forward and in a menacing aura tries to well intimidate eris and well she just reveals that she's not she's no longer wearing the collar and it's just an illusion oh it seems that everybody is, well, not wearing collars. It was just an illusion and stuff. Right here, they just uh, broke down what's going on. So Tempest and Daybreaker got into the scuffle. Uh, Daybreaker, uh, how do how to put this? Um, using all magic, blah blah blah. So let's just say that Daybreaker used spell. And it was hot enough to melt the collar around her neck. And they came up with a plan to kind of free the rest of the group. So 
with that, Daybreaker just blasts a flame round to Ares, but Ares managed to put up a shield around herself. But uh, Ares didn't notice the rest of the group because she's kind of a big dum dum, and they all blast their spell towards the shield. And nope, it's not working at all. So Ares is going to deal the final blow to Daybreaker because of her insulin. And Luna jumps in the way. Oh no! And before Luna is blessed into Smithereens, she is attacked by Bubble. It's not effective at all. That's not a word! Bubbles! <laughs> <laughs> I was I was tempted to say it, but I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> oh, it would be funny if we two were both say it at the same time. I was tempted to say it. <laughs> Boys. <laughs> the surest way to overcome temptation is to give in. <laughs> hey, little sweetie bot. <laughs> I said bucking, not... Yeah, you know. there's a difference. Really? Oh. <laughs> Go back and check the sound check. Will do. What's up, I'm sweetie? Uh, but anywho, um, talking about checking, Ares just says, What's wrong? What what happened? And Kepler just says, Check out the spear. It's not a real spear. It's just a copy of whatever it is. And Kepler has the real one because during the stumble that he did, he exchanged it. Oh, you sneaky little kitty, you. He breaks the orb and returns Princess Luna's power back to her. And with that, Princess Luna has all her power and is going to kick some ass. She, well, she doesn't really threaten uh, Daybreaker, sorry, no, uh, whatchamacallit, Princess Eris. And Princess Eris is begging for her life and saying that she is kind of a victim in all of this. And before... A judgment could be placed. Daybreaker just blasts her out the window. Like, yeah, she's toast. And everybody's shocked at that thing. Like, what? And Daybreaker just announced that, okay, I'm the new boss of this city. You guys, I allow you to leave because you helped me defeat Eris. Now, get out of here before I change my mind. And, well, they do. And... The sad part is Luna thought they had a connection, but now Luna is Princess Luna and Daybreaker here only shows respect to the late Nightmare Moon. So yeah, and with that, we get a letter written by Princess Luna to her sister, which will never be sent. And yeah, it's, it's a nice letter. It's a nice letter. With that, the issue ends. That was so beautiful. Yeah, I know. Anyway, uh, Silver, what do you have to say? Well, we just witnessed murder. Murder has happened. In a pony comic, yeah. Well, it's kind of funny. Going off Tempest in her declaration of, oh, come on, we all know how this is going to happen. She's pointing out the flaws. Then Capper gets self-aware, saying, oh, I thought I was going to be the big reveal, but it turns out you all redeemed the villain. <laughs> So everyone tr thinks that they're being very self-aware and they know how this is going to go. And then Daybreaker just undermines everything. And we learned that one, Princess Eris, she may not actually be dead. You know, she's she's just off to the side going, I'm not dead, I'm just heavily burned. <laughs> no. uh, hello? Can True. anyone hear me? <laughs> True. That or she's blessing off again. And then, uh, then Daybreaker sends someone to finish her off. You shot me! Why did you shoot me in the leg? Was that one or two? I forgot. I think it was one. Oh, is it all three? I remember Will Ferrell playing the, the the Indian guy, and he got into a very rough predicament. It's all three, right? Uh, just about. Oh wow. <laughs> I mean, I mostly just remember one and two because cognitive dissonance. Oh yeah. But carry on. But then, uh, Daybreaker reveals that she's not redeemed. She just took advantage of a situation. And now she's in charge and she thinks that she's weak no longer. But apparently she hasn't learned anything from the Pony of Shadows or Eris. 
because each of them went through this cycle of they think they're in charge, they're king or queen of the world. They bring on a subordinate that they think they can control forever. That subordinate then becomes the master and destroys them. How long before she like recruits a little twilight, evil twilight, and that evil twilight overthrows Daybreaker? Yeah. You know, Silver, this reminds me of the Sith. They come in pairs. Are you trying to blow his mind again? No, this is fact. <laughs> and why are you telling me that they're concealed in fruit? <laughs> no, what the... I'm just saying, I mean, if, if they're au pair, sure, but... Anywho, now that I'm driving Norman nuts, which is truly my goal in every podcast. <laughs> uh, is that also the Well, I mean, I, I appreciate that they've done something... This is, in my eyes, subverting in a, in a good way. We expect the My Little Pony formula. We're used to them uh, redeeming the villain, and and even Capper gives voice to this. But then they pull, they show no, it's not nearly so clean cut and dry. It's in my eyes. A, this is how you do a good twist. The twist of oh, Doctor Caballero and Aoi Zodal aren't so bad. That's not so good a twist because that's insulting what we observed before. Well, maybe insulting is a strong word, but at the very least, it di dismisses what we've seen this is honoring what we've seen but at the same time saying what if this happened true 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 and on top of that like it's an elseworld tale so it's one of those cases where probably we'll get to see something of made out of this in the future maybe or it's also fully possible that we may never hear from this alternate world again yep there's also a possibility but anywho uh tara what about you well, I mean, this is the first time I actually see someone set on fire and bursting out into the window and onto the horizon. Oh, there's always the Team Rocket, and yeah, Team Rocket has always done that. They're professionals at it. It did take me by surprise, too, when Luna's like, I don't want to hurt you, and all of a sudden, see fire bursting out, and it's just like, I do. It's like, wow, okay, that got dark. <laughs> yep. Everybody's eyes were, <laughs> well, open up your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. But I do like too how because we're we're so used to the, um, the villains being reformed and it's like oh yeah I could easily be reformed but this one's like nope I am still evil uh, I only go by I only like Nightmare Moon I do not like you kind of sounds like an angry fanboy where he misses the old Twilight instead of the new Twilight where she had wings. Oh, I, uh, are you trying to say something? <laughs> are you trying to say something? No, I'm just. just just implying something. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, right. Anything else? No, that's pretty much it. Alright, and as for me, this comic was a lot of fun from beginning to end. The whole arc of it was really awesome. We get to see the setup, we get to see the downfall, the bounce back and stuff like this here is a perfect end. I do like Kepper in this uh, issue. At, like he stole the show he, he stole the show until the almost the very end where it was daybreaker's turn when daybreaker blasts Ares out of that window everybody was like oh what that's not normal you even get to see kepper like pointing a finger and saying like oh, what, what what just happened like this is not normal and in all honesty it is not normal this is <laughs> this is also another uh, wake up call for the characters, the guys, that this is not their world. Things are operated differently over here. Yeah, people get blasted out of windows all the time in this dimension. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, well, in, in the end, we, we won't know what will happen because we won't be exploring the world in the future. Usually when mirror worlds are involved, they always get thrown out later on. And I have a strong feeling that this is for going to follow the same fate as that one issue. What was it called again, Silva? Oh, Reflections? Yeah, Reflections. Yeah, same fate. Not going to be remembered. But, well, uh, since this is a five-issue comic, I probably will have a lot of people um, saying that they really enjoy it. Because I do. I do. As do I. Mm -hmm. But anywho, um, Silva, what are you going to do next week? Well, I believe we got it. We're continuing our ever-progressive move towards the end of the series. 
The end of My Little Pony. Oh no, it's so sad. Oh yeah, issue no, episode twenty two. Two. Growing up is hard to do. The Crusaders achieve adulthood status by a shortcut. I'm sure this will go well. Axe. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, like, they, 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 they what, uh, use gold farming and whatnot? I mean, it's not that bad, right? If only. No, they, they used one shortcut. It's not even a cheat code. Mm. But anywho, growing up is hard to do. That'll be next week's review, and it's going to be a lot of fun, I guess. Remember, anyway, I'm gonna hold my tongue till we start reviewing that one. So, anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can do so at dmvshow@gmail.com. If you, well, you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at dmvs show, and my personal Twitter account is at Roman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on DeviantArt and Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. You can also support my uh, videos and comics on Patreon or Ko-fi. Do a search for Silver Quill. Uh, if you search YouTube for After the Fact or Silver Quill, I shall appear. And on Wednesdays, if there be a new comic, you can find me on Equestria Daily, posting a blog about it. And again, we are steadily approaching tr the My Little Pony Transformers crossover. Eha, eha. Awesome, awesome. Can't wait to read that one. Uh, there's still a lot of books that we need to go through especially the main line and some other issues that are about yep so stick around we'll be reviewing them uh tara where can the good people find you well the good people can find me on facebook deviantart twitter or youtube under the name tortero 1324 or they can just do a google search and i'll be on all platforms including my patreon page and my ko-fi page Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go do so, guys. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, search your radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PlayLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a weekly access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Just a gentle reminder, listeners who support the podcast on Patreon get a, well, a different cut of the review and discussion podcast where, well, let's just say that you get a bit longer, a bit more uncut content. Very, very entertaining, I have to say. Like, there's a few things that were said that could not be repeated anywhere else. Isn't that right, Silva? Yeah, it's like trying to blow my mind about a, a clone. <laughs> uh, uh, I give up. Anywho, um, with that also, we got the thank yous. Uh, talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Amy, Jeffrey, Tristan, and also myself. Like, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia Vaquil. And I am the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the VN Show. See ya! Clones are no longer shocking. It's not mind-blowing either. What is the in new thing to shock people? Treating people with respect. That's so rare, it's a, it's downright shocking these days. Oh. Yeah, you really see that. Oh wow, that's a foreign concept. What are you guys trying to say? I, I, no, that, that's not right, Silver. That's not right. You take that back. Never!